Hi, I'm Bill Griffith, an application engineer from Agilent Technologies. Today I'd like to talk about some tips and tricks for troubleshooting with your benchtop DMM. First, you'll want to start with a high quality set of probes. These are the 34133A probes. They're very small, so it's easy to probe on a very dense circuit board. In addition to that, they're very sharp, so if there's any dirt or oxidation on the PC board, they'll cut right through it. Lastly, they're spring-loaded, so that if you look away, they'll remain in contact with the PC board. Next, you'll want a DMM with a high-quality display. This is the 34411A. It uses a vacuum fluorescent display, so it's easy to read from a variety of angles and under multiple lighting conditions. The next feature is it has a dual display, which is useful because it's unusual to have a signal that's pure DC or pure AC. So in this case, I have a consumer power supply that isn't working properly. So we'll start by looking at the 12 volt supply. And as you can see on the display, it's reading 14 volts DC, so it's a bit high on the second display, you can see the AC component, so it, it doesn't have a lot of noise on it, which is what you'd expect. We'll move on to the 5 volt supply. Once again, it's reading quite high. It's 6.2 volts approximately on the DC display. And again, it's, it's not very noisy, as we'd expect. But as I go to the 3.3 volt supply, you can see it's reading a bit low, and it's kind of hard to make out that there's something else going on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase the integration time and try to make our DC volts a little bit more stable. So I'll go ahead and make that change. So I'm going to increase our integration time. So now we should see a, a more stable DC volt reading. I'm going to turn the second display back on. And now it's going to be measuring the peak-to-peak the -peak over that longer integration time so we can see the true peak-to-peak -peak value is over a volt. So it has quite a bit of AC noise on it as well as reading low. So right away we can see the problem with this power supply. Let's move on to resistance. This DMM will auto-range very quickly but if you know you're going to be probing the same resistance or similar resistance, you can also go ahead and put it into a manual range and it'll just measure that much quicker. Another fe nice feature of this product is it has a, a trigger hold feature. So what that allows you to do is it will allow you to make a measurement so this is a, approximately a 2K ohm resistor. And then when I take my probes away, it will lock in on that reading until I measure another resistor. So this one will go back to the 6K ohm resistor. And once again, the, the reading will lock in. So that is another really nice feature of this multimeter. OK, let's move on to continuity mode. In continuity mode, we'll get an audible tone whenever the two probes are touching or there's continuity between them. So one of the useful things to do with continuity mode is to trace our grounds around. We have a lot of uh, decoupling capacitors on this board, so we can go ahead and find the ground side of those capacitors very quickly in this mode. On a modern PC board, you have a lot of very small components, many of which aren't labeled. So another nice feature of this DMM is that it includes capacitance measurements. So if you have an unlabeled capacitor, you can easily see what value it is. In addition, it also makes frequency measurements, which is nice for checking your clock signals. Or if you have a switching power supply, you can check the frequency that it is switching at. The DMM also features a broad set of ranges. One of the most important ones is for Making DC current measurements, it can measure very low DC currents, which is important for mobile devices. Lastly, the DMM features a lot of speed 
versus accuracy trade-offs. And so if you're unsure of a setting, you can always stick with the defaults, and the defaults will have a good trade-off between accuracy and speed. So hopefully you've learned some new tips and tricks for your next time you're troubleshooting with your bench DMM. Thanks for watching.